And I've had a hard time, especially since my kids grew up and left home. And I had more time to sit and think about things. And I want y'all to know that. But I praise the Lord that his word says in 1 John 1, 9. That if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And even though I have never met my daughter Julie, I pray that we will all get to meet in heaven. Now then, Sorry that I've been asked quite a few times to get up and speak, but I just never have felt like I should. So I ask y'all to forgive me for the things that I've done and to pray for me. We need the prayers of each other. Now then, let's look in 2 Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3. And verses 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days, I guess, does everybody have it? Second Timothy what? Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Okay. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And you look down through there, and the whole world that you see now, I mean, this, this describes the world as we know it. In the last few years, things have changed more in than my whole lifetime. Even in, within the last few months since the first of the year. You know, I, you think back to that story that we've heard, the end of the road. Where there's two divisions. You can almost see the two divisions now, I mean, it's getting becoming very distinct between the two. And this country here, you would have never thought that we'd have been shut down and our rights taken away, but 
you know, back in uh, 911 when that happened. Well, actually, but back before that, with with the year 2000 coming in, people is oh, it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world, and you had a little upturn of you know studying God's word. Then 911 happened, and people started turning turning to God's word more, looking at it and studying it. Every time that you have something happen, people start looking for answers to things. Just like when, uh, I can't remember the quote or where it came from, but during war, when, when men are in the foxholes, you know, they'll, even though they might be atheists when they go, when they're in the foxholes, they believe in, they, they're praying to a God. They're trying to reach out to something. And that's the way we're created. We're, we're, we reach out. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, we can sit back and talk about the difference between the liberals or the conservatives, the Democrats or the Republicans, but it goes way beyond that. The devil's in, in control of the things that are, are happening. Well, God's ultimately in control, but the devil's bringing these things about. He's behind all the stuff that's going on. And people don't go deep enough. Oh, it's, it's this and that. But we look at the things that are going on now. You know, the Bible tells us to be subject to the principalities, to, to the government, and, I mean, to the governing bodies and everything else. Jesus has put them in control, uh, and we're to obey, or God has put them in control, and we're to obey. And so, when all this started with the coronavirus, uh, you know, like, it was for everybody's good. We're got to, to level this out so we don't overrun the hospitals. And so the churches said, okay, we'll put off church uh, to keep everybody safe. So that wasn't a bad thing to start out with. And then they keep, kept wanting to prolong it and put it a little further and a little further. Like in Oregon, uh, the governor up there said, I'm going to shut it down indefinitely. And it went to uh, state's lower court there, and he says, no, you can't do that. You had 30 days, and your 30 days is up. And if it goes any further than this, it has to go to the state Supreme Court. Well, I mean not Supreme Court, to the legislature. Well, it went to the Supreme Court and they overruled the lower court's decision and said, until this is uh, brought up in the Supreme Court, her, her deal stands. And it's this way everywhere. The whole thing with this virus, 
That's why I say it's the devil behind it. He's the one, and they're doing the bidding of Satan when they do these things. Because they said quarantine, lockdown. Hebrews chapter 10, 25, what does it say? Hebrews chapter 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. And the things that's going on, do we see the day approaching? But now they're saying, you can't assemble together. You have to stay apart. That's why I say we're supposed to obey the government until it goes against God's word and what God tells us to do. What does God tell us to do? He tells us to come together. Where the, the state's telling us to stay apart. But it's not just that they're telling us to stay apart. It's okay for everybody to go out to the stores and whoever go in there or go over to this place or that place. But no, the churches can't meet. In California, the church's reopening is in the third stage of the reopening part. You can't. They can open up uh, different things. I don't know what all is reopened in California right now. But I know in some, in some places, they've opened up the bars and everything. You can go in and get your drinks. You can go in and do whatever you want to do. But no, the churches have to stay locked down. Uh, and then some of the places where the, they are reopening the churches, they have to keep a registry of everybody that attends church. Why? They don't keep a registry of everybody that goes into Walmart or any of the other stores. There's no registry for them there. Why the churches? That's why I say in all of this, we can see the devil working behind all of it. And we know that, it, and the Bible tells us that, you know, things are, and Sister White tells us that as it starts to wrap up, things start moving rapidly. I'm not saying that this is the end right here, but it's setting it up for it. Uh, social distancing. Yeah, bars, but you can't go to church. Go get your drink. And uh, a lot, speaking of the drinking, as far as the virus part itself, they're told to, uh, whether the person dies from coronavirus or not, if they have coronavirus, that the death is to be put down as a coronavirus death. And uh, I was listening in Colorado, they went back and rechecked it. Almost 25, between 23 and 25 percent of the deaths that they put down up there was because of something else that happened. One guy had uh, alcohol intoxication. He sat at home and drank himself to death, but he was infected with coronavirus, so it was a coronavirus death. They in, they've inflated the the virus deaths by different means. And what state was it? Louisiana or somewhere down there. They drove up in their cars to church. The windows rolled up listening to the pastor on the radio who was speaking from the front of the church. And they came in and went to every car there had them roll their windows down to give them a ticket for showing up. 
because they weren't supposed to. But you could leave there and go down to the drive-in sink and pull up car to car and order your food there. But you couldn't sit in the church parking lot and listen to the preacher. Now they've withdrawn their tickets and everything, canceled out their tickets because of lawyers that have got a hold of them. But this is the things that's going on, you know. And a lot of the world knows that this ain't right. But they look at it as the power between the conservatives and the liberals. Instead of looking to the devil is trying to take control of everything right now. You know, we, it tells us that he's going around as a roaring lion seeking him, he, he can devour. And he knows he has but a short time right now. He, he's doing everything that he can. And then in some places they say, okay, you can go back to church, but you can't sing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you, you, I can't remember what state it is. There's probably more than one, but I know there's some states that if you go back to church, you can't sing. You know, I've got a whole list of, uh, <laughs> of texts here that you can go through where it tells us to make a joyful noise, sing unto the Lord. But here we have, okay. First, you have to quarantine. We got, we got to keep the churches shut. Oh, but if you do go back to church, uh, you can't sing. The pastor has to stay at least 12 feet away from you. Uh, a family can sit in the row, but other than that, you have to distance. You can't be close to each other. And, you know, as far as the social distancing goes, the Bible tells us, uh, you know, greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, that's not keeping a very large distance between you if you're going to greet one another with a holy kiss. Uh, God programmed us to be social people. And they're figuring out now that all this social distancing and where they're keeping people away is causing more mental problems than the problems that the virus was causing. There's people dying because of the lack of socialization. There's been a lot of people commit suicide. There has. Well, just like the guy I said from Colorado. Of course, it might have happened anyway, but, you know, if you're locked down in your house and you can get all the alcohol that you want, what you going to do? Sit there and drink yourself to death, which is what he did. Uh, we can look, look up some of the Psalms 91.1. Oh, I'm sorry. I read my own writing wrong. Psalms 80 on the first one. <laughs> Sing aloud unto God our strength. Make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob. Uh, Psalms 95, one. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. In verse 2, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful no noise unto him with songs. You know, that's a big part of coming to church, being able to sing and, and lift our voices up together to God. And their whole deal with social distancing, <laughs> I got tickled. You know, they come up with all the different reasons or all their, the medical field has come up with. 
okay, out in California, you can go to the beach if you stay on the wet sand. Can't get on the dry sand. You have to stay on the wet sand. Because it can't get in the water. Can't get in the water. Well, I don't know about, I didn't know about the not getting in the water in California, but I know in New York, you have to stay on the dry sand. You can't get on the wet sand. And if they catch you out in the ocean, they will drag you out of the ocean and take you to jail. <laughs> So, which one is keeping you healthy? The dry sand or the wet sand? <laughs> and all the stuff that they've done, they, they've completely lost any sensibility in what they're doing. It's, it's not even to the point of really what's best for the people anymore. It's to the point of we're going to show you what we can do. Uh, the governor of Michigan up there. You can go out on the lake in a canoe, but you can't go out on the lake in a motorboat. Why? Is the motor going to cause the coronavirus? I mean, that's why, you know, I. I talk about the coronavirus and the things that they're doing, but that's really not what it's about. It's about power. It's about power. And the devil is working it around so he can, can take control of everything. And that's why I asked the question when I started, are you ready for Jesus to come? You know, We have to look at our own selves and make sure that we're right. Just like I was talking about in Sabbath school, you know. This guy is talking about the commandments, keeping the commandments. But we can't, we're going to keep sinning up until Jesus comes and takes us back. But we're, when we're saved, Okay, our spirit, this is what he's saying. This is not correct. Our spirit is saved. Our soul, well, it's getting improved. But our body, well, it's going to keep sinning until Jesus comes back. Confusing? Right. Because... Jesus came in the flesh, in the body. So if sin is in the body, then Jesus couldn't be our example. But Jesus was our example. He came here. He lived a sinless life to show us that we can. The problem is, with myself, I don't want to let God take complete control. I want to be able to control part of my life. I don't want to lose control. I don't want to give it up. But that's why we have to surrender completely to God. Let Him take control. When He takes control, He transforms us. Through him, we don't want to sin. We overcome sin. But we have to make a complete, complete surrender. We have to say, you take control. I can't do it. And we can't. Not of our own selves. We can't do it. We might want to do it in our minds, but as long as we keep control of ourselves, the devil has an avenue in. If we let God have control, complete control, the devil doesn't. 
He can't go through Jesus. apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than men God expects us to go along with whatever governing body there is until it defies his laws as with the three Hebrews when they were told to come out and to the valley there when Nebuchadnezzar had the statue or the idol set up out there. They went as, they went as far as they could in obeying him. But when it come down to worshiping God, They were willing to give up their lives to give glory to God instead of obeying men. And as we see things coming down now, we know that time's short. In our country alone, we see things that have never happened here before. And it's happened rapidly. You know, what, this is May? Six months ago, we wouldn't have thought any of this would have been happening that's happening now. We never dreamed that there would be, a, in a short time, we wouldn't be going to church. That we can't just go out and do what we want to do. But it happened that fast. I remember, you know, I went home and come to work on a Monday. You know, when I went home Friday, everything was still normal. We heard what was going on over in China and different places, but we hadn't come to that point here. And then I go to work Monday morning and my boss comes and says, we'll probably be shut down here in a little while. I said, maybe, but I don't think so. And he said, well, if not here in a little while, probably by the end of the day. And then he said, well, by the end of the week. And then come to work the next week. And he says, well, I know by the end of this week. You know, this scared a lot of people. And fear causes people to do things. Uh, I heard when this first came about and everything happened there's people that talked about even burning their house and heading out into the woods and stuff it scared people and that's why everybody did what they did everybody was scared I was worried I wasn't worried so much about myself but I was worried about my family you know, I took extra precautions. I made sure I took my garlic every day. I wasn't worried about getting sick. Stuff kill anybody. My oldest boy, I told him, yeah, you take garlic, mince it up in the dill, pour honey over it, take it. He 
called me up the next day. <laughs> and uh, I knew it was him that showed up his number on the phone. I didn't hear nothing but a little bit of laughing. The phone went click. <laughs> his stomach was hurting him so bad he couldn't talk. His wife was laughing at him. <laughs> so, anyway, I said, yeah, don't take it on an empty stomach if you want to eat some. But, you know, everybody was worried about something. They were trying to do something to prevent stuff. You know, I come in, when I have a bathroom out in the shop, I would come in and take a bath and wash my clothes and everything out there so she didn't have to be around any of it. But we need to really look to God for guidance. We need to be studying His Word more than ever now. As we see the day approaching, we need to have a close personal relationship with God. Not one where we just go to church. Because just like what happened, we don't know when we're not going to be going to church again. We have to have a personal relationship with God. We can't do it for one another. We can pray for one another. We can lift each other up. But we can't have that relationship for one another. We can pray. We can study. But each one of us needs to prepare. And be ready. And I like uh, Luke chapter 21. We usually refer to Matthew, but Luke has it in there too. Luke chapter 21, verses 10 through 19. Then said he unto them, Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. Now, somebody was telling me the other day, and I haven't looked up to see the truth to it or not, but that the true north has moved and is now causing all kinds of earthquakes all over the world. Not just minor earthquakes, but bigger earthquakes. Like I said, I haven't studied into that. I'm not sure. But I do know that there have been more earthquakes. And famines. We can look. All this stuff that's been going on, the main talk about now is the coronavirus, but right before and during the first part of the coronavirus, you had all these locusts eating up all the vegetation and everything else. We had the fires over in Australia. We had, man, there has been so much going on here lately that we can't hardly keep up with all that's going on. Mm -hmm. And pestilences, which is what we're going through right now. And fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. And uh, somebody was telling me the other day that they think the coronavirus deal was because it's something that was covering up because they're talking about this asteroid that's coming in and uh, probably pass, if it doesn't hit the earth, pass very near to it. And that is, uh, it's done split in two and part of it's going to hit the sun. Uh, and it's not supposed to be that long off when this happens. So, like I said, I don't know about that either. But you hear all these different things that are going on. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle it therefore in your hearts, not to meditate 
before what you shall answer. For, for I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. That's why we have to like, let God take complete control. We don't have to think ahead of time what we're going to do. If God has control of us, then it says here that he's going to give us the things that we're going to say. We don't have to think about it. And the things that he gives us to say, they won't be able to repudiate it. They won't be able to say anything about it. Because we're not doing it for ourselves. God is doing it for his glory. And you shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinfolks and friends. And you know, that's another thing about this virus. Here. You have... Have where they're telling them, if you know that somebody's sick, turn them in. If turning this, this, this whole thing is, that's what I said, it's separating. It's made pretty much two distinct parties right now. You have those who are scared and they're going to turn everybody in for whatever happens. And then you have those who are steadfast. You know, they, you might be cautious. We need to be cautious. There's all kinds of diseases out there. It doesn't hurt to stay healthy. But we don't need to be scared about it. We need to turn to God. Romans 8, 38 and 39. Romans chapter 8 verses 38 and 39 for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Yeah. All we have to do is draw nigh to God, and yeah. he'll draw nigh to us. In Luke 21, 28, Luke 21, 28 says, And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your head, for your redemption draweth nigh. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the coming of Christ. And I pray that we'll all be ready. Okay. You want to come up here and we'll have to close the song? Sonny, are you ready to play for us? <laughs>